Hello, friends, and welcome to another video lesson in NibiOS Talks. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified of new uploads. Um, this video is part of a playlist called the SQL Mistakes to Avoid. And here we'll be learning about a common mistake when you're relatively new to SQL and uh, started joining at least two tables in a select statement. So let's start by querying table a table. Okay, so select city code, city name, continent code, continent name from geocodes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're using SQL Developer, which is the, the GUI IDE tool of Oracle Database, okay? So we're trying to um, query from a table called geocodes. Okay, I will just execute this and let's see what happens. Right, so the output is shown at the bottom. Um, so a couple of records are retrieved by the select statement. Now let's try querying another table, okay? Let me just get it in a moment. And then you will see what we mean by this uh, video right here. Okay, so we're doing a select from another table called city time. Okay, let's execute this. Okay, so it uh, it queries all the columns of that table without any work condition whatsoever. Okay, everything's fine up to this point. And now let's try to join the two tables, geocodes and city time. Now, if you're aware of what I discussed in a previous video, partition query or partition join, then you know that when joining two or more tables, it's not a good idea not to have join conditions. Okay, let's just, I'll just show you what I mean. Okay, so here we are doing a query from two tables, which you have seen uh, a while ago. Geocodes and city time. The syntax is correct, okay? It will not throw an error when I execute this, but, but technically, if you have seen the my previous video, uh, one of my videos in the same, same playlist called Cartesian Query or Cartesian Join, and you will know that it's not a good idea. When you join two tables, two or more tables, then it's a good idea to uh, use the proper conditions to, uh, to join them, okay? Not like this, just mentioning the two tables or more tables, then um, this will have no error, but the data that's being churned out is actually incorrect in terms of the number of rows that you are supposed to get, okay? So, um, now the correct way of joining tables is okay before that okay so we revised the select statement um the two tables are still here i'm querying specific columns from the two tables so select city code city name continent code continent name from geocodes city time so these two are the two tables okay and then i have a work condition which is um to join the two tables using the column city code okay so it looks fine but uh, again this is one of the pitfalls of somebody who is not yet that familiar with sql uh, it's natural to make mistakes like this one okay so it's good to know that's why we're in this playlist called sql mistakes to avoid so if i try to execute the query see what happens okay we got an error it says um, column ambiguously defined. So you would ask yourself, uh, uh, anyway, here it says error at line three. So you know it is at line three, which is this one. So it tells you where it happens. But it is it is also saying column ambiguously defined, meaning SQL itself is scratching its head and is asking you, what do you mean by city code? Because there's a city code in both tables. There's a city code column in this table, and there's a city code column in this table. So SQL is asking you, which city code is this? The one that belongs to geocodes or the one that belongs to city time? And for this one, the same. Which city code is this? Is this the one for geocodes and, or city time? That's why the error message is saying column ambiguously defined, okay? So to solve this problem, um, to avoid this kind of error, what you will need to use, it's what's known as a table alias, okay? Um, okay, think of an alias as a nickname, a shorter name for something. In fact, it can even be just one letter. 
So I will edit the select statement in this manner. I'll just show you in a while. I'll just copy it and paste it here. And let me explain to you bit by bit. Okay, so I'll remove this and put in here the good code. Okay, so I'm using alias. Look at the alias. So as you know, the error we had in the previous um, um, seconds ago was saying column ambiguously defined because the city code column exists in both tables, geocodes and city time. So to, to fix this thing, what you're gonna do is to give or use an alias on both tables. So an alias, like I said, can be a single letter as long as it uh, nicely describes, visually describes, or gives you a hint on which table it's referring to. So in this case, geocodes, for simplicity, I'll use one letter alias because it starts with G, I'll just use G. And city time starts with C, I just use a C. It can be anything, but it's for my own convenience, for my own understanding. So these are the aliases I'm using on these two tables, okay? Geocodes uh, has an alias of G and city time as an alias of C. Similarly, because I'm now using a table alias, I will use that on the select list. This is called a select list over here. Okay, the list of columns that you are trying to query. So I know for sure that these, uh, the names, I mean the columns, I know to which tables they belong to. So I will um, add in front, um, in a dot notation, the alias. So alias dot, which is table, table dot, table alias dot column name. So table alias dot column name, okay? So you have select, so wherever the column is mentioned in this select statement, I will use an alias, okay? So not only in the table name itself, there's an alias, but I will also use an alias in front of every mention of the column names, okay? So here, Select G, the city name, comma, G, continent, colon, G's, continent name, C, dot, UTC. That means this, this, and this, these three are columns that belong to geocodes. Whereas UTC is a column that belongs to city time. How do I know? Because of this alias in front, okay? And then finally, in the work laws, uh, because there is a mention of Columns, in fact, this was the root cause of the error we were getting earlier on ambiguous column definition. Then it gets solved by the use of the alias also. Okay, so uh, although I know for a fact that this column city code exists in both tables, I will have still to use an alias on both of them. So g dot something here, g dot city code equals c dot city code. Okay, so I will execute this and it will have no error anymore. Okay, so it solved the problem. Now, just to show you that this is harmless, I can interchange this too. Why? Because anyway, it's the same name. City code here, city code there. Uh, and it's an equality. Okay, so I can use the C here and then the G here. It will not have an error. Okay, so it's the same thing. All right, so uh, that's it. We have seen when, uh, I mean, the danger of joining two or more tables without using an alias, especially if this happens, especially because of ambiguous columns, meaning the column name um, is similar or exists, column name exists in both tables. So if you don't use an alias in a uh, select statement or any SQL statement for that matter, then this kind of error will come up, the ambiguous column error, okay? So we learned something with this and uh, I hope uh, you, uh you have enjoyed it a little bit okay so thank you for watching and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet please click subscribe okay i will be seeing you in the next video